Okay, look at, let's get right into it and let me show you the first pattern you should be making in Flow 3D. The first step of this process for the purpose of this video is just importing a base model that we'll be using to drape the garment on. You could use any model, something that you've sculpted, something from past. Uh, for this case, I'm just using a default model from the Clo 3D library. After that, I go ahead and start adjusting the measurements of the model. You don't have to do this, but if you would like to have your own measurements or you would like the model to look a certain way, you can go ahead and press the header for the avatar and you can adjust those settings to your liking. I find that the Clo models are super flat and they have no volume, so I tend to just change the thighs, the waist, the bust, and everything else that I feel like needs a little bit of home, you know? After I'm done adjusting, I'm gonna start the process of drafting the top pattern. I'm using the rectangle tool, and then I'm using the create points tool to make points along the shoulder area and under the underarm area. This will help me kind of create that neckline and that opening for the shoulder and have it in an angle that sits right on the body. As you can see here, I'm using the V tool to smooth out that curve and just have it sit nicer. Once that's done, sometimes I like creating guidelines just for the purpose of doing things later on. It becomes really helpful when it comes to darts and doing some intricate internal lines or some more complex garments that you want to cut and sew later. You have like a baseline to know where everything is positioned. Once I'm done doing that, I go ahead and do the symmetry on the pattern. And then I go ahead and copy, copy it again, and then I'm gonna use that for the back part of the top. I rotate it with the gizmo, and then I adjust it on the model and start the sewing. And you have a very simple top. This part is not really necessary, but I'm using Control X to adjust the pose of the model. And I am fixing the A pose because I feel like it's a little bit too open for me. I am moving the arms a little bit closer to the body just so the garment can sit nicer if I want to do some intricate sleeves. Once I'm done with the top part, I freeze it and I take the rectangle tool again and start drafting the, the pants. I'm using the select point, um, using my shortcut V as in vendetta, and I am extruding, kind of extruding a point out that will create a curve. I'm adding some more extra points along the crotch area, which will help me create that shape that I need for the pants to sit the way they're supposed to sit, like in a realistic way. I don't have a background in fashion, so I don't think I'm the best at explaining pattern drafting, but this is what I've learned from looking at a bunch of sewing books, and this is what has worked. I am copy and pasting that pattern and just adjusting the top part and kind of tilting it to one side. Why? I don't know. It just seems to work. I think I saw it in a fashion book and it helps. Here I am copying and symmetrizing that pattern and doing all the sewing that needs to be done. Side to side, front to back, and then front to front, front to front, yeah. I'm adjusting the pattern and then it's being draped. This is the most satisfying part to drape. Once I am done with that, I am adjusting the pattern using my shortcut C and just moving things that I would think good. I am moving it up just so that you can see that slant going down. It could go a little bit more upwards. After that, I am also adding some guidelines here um, that I would just want to keep for later on and i'm adjusting the crotch and then just going back and forth moving the garment seeing how it looks on the 3d view and then adjusting the pattern the 2d pattern accordingly so i could have the best fit for that simple it's a simple simple pants but they take a little messing around with a little finagling i'm adding one also in the middle uh this i use for the darts later on like if there's a loose area on the pants i make the it's a little bit bigger on the top 
or I want to go for a certain kind of look, I already have that guide and I know where I'm gonna put the darts or wh which area I'm gonna attempt to do it. For the darts, I'm usually add two points and then I do a split line. Um, and I did six points for this. I bring those points down, one of them further down than the other, and then I sew and then we have like a closer, more fitted shorts closer to the body. And then I add those to the front as well. The darts are not really necessary because the pants already are fitting okay, but I just feel like for the sake of the tutorial, just having darts would help you later on if you want. I don't know, make it like make some flare pants. Like it could work, you can remove them, you can do whatever you want, you can skip this part. Once I'm done with that, I like saving simple patterns as the garments so I can use those later on when I'm beginning um, other projects. So I can just once it opens up, it's already ready for me. So as you can see, uh, the pattern we can transform it. We can um, offset pattern outline, and then we have long pants. It's super easy to really go from a simple look and then create something totally different. This is gonna be a super simple example of how we can transform a simple pattern, but you can go crazy with this, to be honest. Here I am merging it to create a skirt um, there's plenty other ways to create a skirt, but this is just for the purpose of the video. You can really just transform it into anything. Um, here I am messing around with the sewing, doing some openings, um, just playing with the silhouette of the garment to see where we can get. Sewing it back together, just playing around. Using my V shortcut again to smooth out that curve and here I am attempting to add ruffles just I mentioned before for the sake of the showing how versatile um, it is to just create a super simple pattern here I use the rectangle tool and using the same principles that I used to create the top I used it for the ruffle I like doing an elastic of 100% on the things that are gonna stay the same and then on the things that I want to be scrunched and have like that ruffle effect I'm gonna do a lower um, a lower number on those I'm adding some more ruffles along the neckline and then I'm also gonna add some more at the end of that top I love using the superimposed side, superimposed over, superimposed, superimposed under. It saves me so much time and it just relieves all that crashing that can happen when you just simulate a garment. It's super handy. So here I am sewing things together. You can see from rectangles, you can get to a pretty decent place. It's not super simple. I mean, it's not super hard. Basically, the tools that you're gonna need are the edit point, create rectangle, um, the sewing, elastic, um, let's see what else. I also like transform segment, the symmetry tool, and all of those things you're gonna have to cut and, cut and sew. All of those things are gonna be, they're gonna be your best friend. They're gonna be your best success. Here we are. See how we can evolve from a super simple pant to a semi-wearable set of a skirt and a top. Here I am cutting pieces together using the cotton sew and using internal lines and then turning down the opacity to have some kind of intricacy within the garments. And that's it for this one. I will be including the base file for this uh, project on Gumroad. It's gonna be free. This is so simple. Why would I even charge? You can change colors. You can do whatever you want with this. The character is also included. And just play around and see what you can come up with. Cutting things up, sewing things together, changing uh, the opacity on things, changing colors. The world is your oyster, sis. Let me stop saying sis. Not everyone is sis. All right, goodbye.